श्री गुरो श्रीयुत पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जात सहगन रघुनाथाबित तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाकांश नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिये वाचाकलपतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गधाधर श्रीवासादी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो एस्टे वी फिनिश्ड text 8 of the updesh amrit which was speaking about raganuga bhakti <clears throat> and we saw how exalted is raganuga bhakti so today we will discuss text 9 <clears throat> text 9 of updesh amrit is also in a very particular meter called as vasant tilika i guess वैकुंठाजनिथ वरा मधुपुरी तत्रो स्वाद वृंदारण्यम मुदार पाणी रमना तत्रि गोवर्धन राधाकुंडम इहापिपोकुलपते प्रेमृत प्लावना विराजितो गिरितटे सेवाम लेट अस लुक इनटू द ट्रांसलेशन द होली प्लेस नोन एज मथुरा इज स्पिरिचुअली सुपीरियर टू वैकुंठा द ट्रांसेंडेंटल वर्ल्ड बिकॉज द लॉर्ड अपियर्ड देयर वैकुंठाद ताद इट इज it has become vaikuntaj <clears throat> janito vara madhupure no superior to vaikunta vara means superior is madhupuri madhupuri is referring to madhu mathura why janito janito because the lord appeared there so we know that there is the material world and the spiritual world the material world is the inferior energy of the lord and the super uh, the spiritual world is from the spiritual energy of the lord so compared to the material world the spiritual world is superior the material world is called as ek pad vibhuti it is one fourth of the creation of the lord and the spiritual world is called as tri pad vibhuti tri fourth is the spiritual world so you can imagine if the material world is so vast how big is the spiritual world but <clears throat> superior to the spiritual world is mathura which is appearing here in this material world why is mathura superior to even the spiritual world 
because the Lord takes birth here. The birth pastime of the Lord only happens here in this material world. There in the spiritual world, uh, the Lord doesn't perform this pastime. So that is why, that's how glorious is Mathura. Superior to Mathura Puri is the transcendental forest of Vrindavan because of Krishna's Ras Leela pastimes. Tatrapi. Tatrapi means superior to now Mathura. Rasoswad. Rasoswad means Krishna's last Leela pastimes. Vrindaranyam Udarapani Ramana. So superior to Mathura is Vrindavan because the Lord who is Udarapani. The Lord is, uh, you know, addressed as Udarapani. Udarapani means one who is very, very magnanimous in bestowing Krishna Prem to others. Udarapani is one whose hand is mercifully disposed to bestow Prema to his beloved devotees. That is Udarapani. Udar means magnanimous. Pani means hand. One whose hand bestows Krishna Prem to his devotees. So, superior to Mathura is Vrindavan because Krishna performs his pastime there, of especially the Ras Lina. So, every year in the month of Kartik, uh, we celebrate what is called as the Sharad Purnima. So, on the Sharad Purnima day, first time Krishna in Vrindavan on the Vamsi Bhat uh, played his flute and performed this pastime of the Ras Lila. So, that's why because Krishna performs this pastime of Ras Lila in the Vrindavan forest. <clears throat> uh, that is why Vrindavan is superior to Mathura. Now, next. And superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill, for it was raised by the divine hand of Sri Krishna and was the site of his various loving pastimes. Tatrapi Govardhana. So, superior to Vrindavan is Govardhan. Why? Three reasons. <clears throat> One is, it was raised by the divine hand of Sri Krishna. It is the site of various loving pastimes. Two reasons are here. I think one more reason is there in the purport also, I think. Then, and above all, the super excellent Sri Radha Kund stands supreme for it is overflooded with the ambrosial nectarian prema of the Lord of Gokul, Sri Krishna. Gokulapate. Gokulapate is Lord of Gokul. So, superior to Govardhan is Radha Kund. Why? Radha Kundam Ihapi Gokulapate Prema Amrata Plavanath. The nectarian ambrosial Prema, the Lord's Prema towards Srimati Radharani overflows. It overflows, it is overflooding at the holy spot of Radha Kund. So that is why Radha Kund is so superior. Now this is showing the hierarchy of the spiritual places, if you can see. And then Rupa Swami is asking an emphatic question or a rhetorical question, must you say. Where then, Kuryad, is that intelligent person, Viveki, who, ka, is unwilling, na, to serve Sevam, this divine Radha Kund, Asya, which is situated on the foot of Govardhan Hill, Virajito Giritate. So now we have all understood the glory of Radha Kund. It is the topmost holiest place in this universe. And Rupa Goswami is saying, who is that intelligent person who will not save Radha Kund, which is situated on the foot of Govardhan Hill? So what does it mean? Let us all go to Radha Kund and serve Radha Kund. Yes? <laughs> yes? But do we need qualification there to go? Yes, we need qualification. The qualification is there in the 8th verse. Have we come to that stage of Raghunuga Bhakti? Have through our Smaran, we have passed through these 5 stages? <clears throat> So, that is why uh, we have to see whether we have Adhikar. Here, Viveki, uh, Prabhupada will explain in this purport pur that one who has transcendental intelligence, that means one who is completely pure at heart, he is qualified, in fact, to serve Radha Kund. So, let us now go to the analysis of uh, 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Now, if you remember, text 5 to 8 spoke about the Madhya Madhikari Goswami's vision and internal development. And we saw how his vision uh, slowly develops. First is, you know, he is able to recognize three kinds of Vaishnavas and accordingly he serves them. Then he is warned not to see a pure devotee from material vision. And then how, when he avoids his offenses, how slowly by taking the holy name, he destroys all the anarthas. Abhidya, that's how Abhidya uh, destruction happens, was mentioned in text 7. Now, text 8 spoke about Sri Vraj Bhajan Pranali, that is executing Raganuga Bhakti, Tishtan Vraji. Now, text 9 is specifically mentioning where one should reside to do his bhajan in Braj. Bhajaniya stala madde sarvashreshth. Whether I should reside in, uh, in Vrindavan or whether I should go to Barsana or whether I should go to Nandagram. So among the places in Mathurapuri and which is within which is Vrindavan, which is the topmost holiest place where one should execute his bhajan? That is being described here in text 9. Where exactly one should reside and perform his bhajan? Because if you see, Rupa Goswami is saying, Virajito giritate sevam vivaiki naka. Who will not reside on the foothills of Kuvardhan and serve this Radha Kund, which is the topmost holiest place in this universe. So that is the connection between Text 8 and text 9. Now, text 8 and text 9, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says the best worshipable place and the best devotee are being discussed. In text 9, it is best worshipable place, and in text 10, it is the best devotee. Who is the best devotee? That we will see today also. So, for us, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, <clears throat> uh, for us, the holy place is Vrindavan. Our Aradya Dev is Sham Sundar Krishna, Brajatanayas, the son of Nanda Maharaj. And his dham is Vrindavan. And we should follow in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan. Gopi Bharatura Pradkamalayo Das Dasanu Das. This is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us. Ramya Kachita Upasana Vrajavadu Vargenaya Kalpita. So we have to follow in their footsteps. For us, our object of worship is not Mathura Krishna or Dwarka Krishna. It is exclusively Shamsundar Krishna. And the best place to execute Bhajan is in Braj, Tishtan Braj, and within Braj, it is Radha Kund. Now, why is Rupa Goswami giving so much emphasis on Radha Kund? Because if you see, uh, I I think I'll have to show you the uh, overview once again because then it will become clear. Because if you see, um, it's in the preface. Just a minute, let me open those slides. Yes, this is the overview. So we saw 1 to 7 deal with Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, 8 deals with Raganuga Bhakti. Now, verses 9, 10 and 11 speak about Bhava and Prema Bhakti. Now, of course, there is no uh, clear demarcation as to which verse speaks about Bhava Bhakti and which verse speaks about Prema Bhakti. But uh, Abhidheya, Abhidheya, Bhakti hai Abhidheya has been described in eight verses. Now, Prayujan is Krishna praying for us. And Rupa Goswami is revealing how we can attain Prayujan Krishna praying by taking shelter of Sri Radha Kund. Because taking shelter of Srimati Radharani and taking shelter of Radha Kund, they are non-different. So only by taking shelter of Radha Kund, then we can attain the perfection that is Prayojan, that is Krishna Prem. 
and Rupa Goswami has spoken these confidential secrets in verses 9, 10, and 11. In fact, all these three verses just speak about Radha Kunda. <laughs> Nothing else. They just speak about Radha Kunda. So, <laughs> we will now go into the purport to discuss this verse. Anyone has any questions regarding the overview till now what we discussed? If you have any questions, we can take up. Any questions, any clarifications about text 9 which we discussed? Okay, so let us go to the purport. Now, there is only two paragraphs here. It's quite short purport. So, I have already discussed uh, this paragraph when I discussed the translation that the spiritual world is three fourth, it is most exalted. The spiritual world is naturally superior to the material world. But Prabhupada says, however, Mathura and the adjoining areas appearing, although appearing in the material world, are considered superior to the spiritual world. Why? Because the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself appeared at Mathura. So you can imagine the glory of Mathura. In fact, Rupa Goswami has composed a classic work called as Mathura Mahatme. Mahatma means the glories, the glories of Mathura Mandal. And there he has uh, elaborately quoted from various Puranas references of how glorious is Mathura where Krishna took his birth. In fact, he goes on to explain that anyone who resides in Mathura for 15 days, he becomes liberated. <laughs> so this is the glory of Mathura Mandal. Because it is superior to the spiritual world. This itself is, you know, we cannot fathom. Now, after Mathura, then Prabhupada explains the interior forest of Vrindavan are considered superior to Mathura because of the 12 forest Dwadashavan, such as Talvan, Maduvan, Bahulavan, which are famous for the various pastimes of the Lord. So, in the 12 Vanas, Krishna does his wonderful pastimes, and especially in Vrindavan, he does the pastime of the Ras Leela. Now, I have put this in the slide. Uh, not this one. Yeah. <clears throat> so, here is the hierarchy. Material world is one-fourth. Spiritual world is three-fourth. It is superior. Mathura is still superior because the Lord appears there. Vrindavan is superior to Mathura because performs the Ras Leela pastimes, various pastimes in the 12 forest. Govardhan is superior. Why? Because it was raised by the divine hands of Sri Krishna. Krishna tends the cows with his covered friends there. And he would re meet Srimati Radharani there and engage in loving pastimes. So that is why Govardhan is superior. And then Radha Kund, because pure love for Krishna is arose there. Prema Amrita Plavanath. So, Krishna's uh, love overflows towards Radha Marani at Radha Kund. I give the example just like in the Vedic times when the king uh, especially gives birth to a male child who will inherit the kingdom and rule the kingdom and the praja. His heart would be so much overjoyed with happiness that whatever the bards, the bards are the uh, singers who come to the house, he would give all his wealth. In fact, from his uh, own neck, you know, neck, he would give gold. Whatever they would ask in charity, he would give them because his heart is now overflowing with joy and happiness. Similarly, Krishna's love for Srimadhi Radharani is overflooded or overflowing at Radha Kunda. Prema Amrita Plavanath. And that is why uh, this is the place where we can also get Krishna praying. And this is the confidential secret Rupa Goswami is revealing us about Radha Kund. Now, regarding Prabhupada mentioning about the 12 forest. Now, here is an acronym <coughs> by which we can remember the 12 forest. Now, we should remember that in uh, India, north is towards the Himalayas, south is, we know, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So, the Yamuna is flowing from the north and then it goes towards the east. So, 
On the eastern side of the Yamuna bank, there are five vanas. On the western side, there are seven vanas. So how to remember this is, there is an acronym, Krishna Balram. Everyone has visited Krishna Balram Mandir in Vrindavan. And Prabhupada had established the Mayapur Vrindavan Trust, MVT, we call. We know the MVT is there, backside Vrindavan Temple. Only thing you have to add is limited, MVT limited. And from the name Krishna K, three vanas are there on the right side. That is on the eastern side of Yamuna. Kumudavan, Kamyavan, Kadiravan. And Balram B on the left side are four vanas. Bandiravan, Bahulavan, Badravan, Bilvavan. This you will have to remember. But at least B4, K3 and M2, Mahavan, Madhuvan. With the V, Vrindavan, acronym V, there is only Vrindavan forest. T is Talvan and L is Lohavan. In fact, these are the principal Dvadasha Vanas. There are again Upavanas which are numbering in 48 and there are like that N number of Vanas in Vrindavan where Krishna performs his pastimes. There is a Kokilavana in Yavat. So Kokilavan is very famous. So like that there are unlimited Vanas but these are the principal. Now why there are 12 Vanas is because there are 12 Rasas. We know that there are five rasas, Shanta, Dasi, Satya, Vatsala, Madhurya, and there are the seven gown rasas. So, altogether, there are 12 rasas, and there are these 12 primary forests. In fact, in each of these forests, you can, in your heart, relish a particular type of mellow when you go there, because there is a particular type of rasa which is manifested there. Just take there are these 12 rasas. There are these 12 forests. So that is what is being discussed by Srila Prabhupada here about the Dwadasha Varna. Now, after explaining the glory of Vrindavan, then he goes to Govardhan. Vrindavan. Superior to Vrindavan is Govardhan because Krishna lifted it. And then Krishna tends his cows and he performs Beautiful pastimes with Srimati, loving pastimes with Srimati Radharani there. Now, Radha Kund at the foot of Govardhan is superior to all because it is there where love of Krishna overflows. Here is the Prem Amrita Plavana. Advanced devotees prefer to reside at Radha Kund because this place is a site of many memories of the eternal loving affairs between Radha and Krishna. Now, here is a very important point. Advanced devotees prefer to reside. Now, even if one has qualified to practice Raghanuga Bhakti, uh, who is being told to reside in Braj, <coughs> if he is qualified even and attained Bhava Bhakti, especially our mood, which is coming from our Guru Varya, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarvataku, Srila Prabhupada, and in fact, God Krishodas Babaji Bhakti Nathakur is that we engage in preaching. And internally, in our heart, we are always at Vrindavan if we have developed that Vrindavan consciousness. Because that is more pleasing to Krishna, that is more pleasing to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, although somebody might be qualified to execute this bhajan in Vrindavan, but our Acharya's moves in the Guru Parampara is to preach, being wherever you are, Sani Sita, and to preach the message of Gita and Bhagavatam, where we can attract the conditioned souls to Krishna consciousness. And doing this confidential service, we attract the mercy of Krishna. We become dear to Krishna. The only way we can become dear to Krishna is to preach Krishna's message. And that's how we can attain his mercy. So that is why, uh, that is our uh, mood. And proper, that's why he says, prefer to reside. He is not advising our devotees to go and reside there. So this is briefly about this first paragraph. There is one question now I will take up. Uh, yes, uh, Madan Mohan Prabhuji. Prabhu, uh, this 12 rasas, the 12 uh, forests, 
uh, you have kindly explained. Uh, then where is the parochia rush? <laughs> there is a Madhuri Ras here. The Madhuri Ras is in the conjugal love Ras. And in that there is Sokia and Parekia. In Vrindavan, it is always Parekia Ras. In Dwarka, in the wedded love, that is Krishna and the queens of Dwarka, that is called as Sokia Ras. So the Parekia Ras is there in Vrindavan. Parekia Bhave Vrajeta Dahar Prachar. So the uh, mood of the gopis is that of a Madhuri Ras, but it is Parekia. So that's how we have to understand. Thank you. Any other questions anyone has regarding this first paragraph? Any questions, any clarifications? Okay, so we'll go to the next paragraph, which is very short. Okay. Nan Prabhupada in the next paragraph explains that how in the Chaitanya Charitamra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he visited Braj Bhumi, he could not locate Radhakund. And then he finally located it. He took bath there. And then he excavated that small pond there. And later on, the six Goswamis, especially Rupa and Raghunath, uh, did a lot of work there. And now there is a large pond called Radhakund there. So this is what... Uh, Prabhupada is stating here from the Chaitanya Charitamrit. So I will go into the Chaitanya Charitamrit verses to discuss this. Now, we all know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he took sannyas in Katwa, he immediately wanted to go towards Vrindavan. In fact, he was rushing towards Vrindavan. And although he was on the bank of Ganga, uh, Nityanandru told the coward boys to tell that this is Yamuna. So he thinking Yamuna, Yamuna, he went that he's actually going to Vrindavan, but he was on the bank of Ganga. And at last, uh, Advaita Acharya came there and then he took him to his house. We know all this pastime. Uh, then Sachi Mata requested him to stay in Jagannath Puri. <clears throat> After delivering Sarvabhav Bhattacharya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu attempted to go to Vrindavan, <clears throat> but he was only successful to go up till Ramakeli where he met Rupa and Sanatan and bestowed his mercy. In fact, Rupa and Sanatan uh, are eternal associates of Mahaprabhu who are Rupa Manjiri and Sanatan, I don't remember. He's also Manjiri in the spiritual world. So without getting the mercy of the Vraj Devis, one cannot actually go to Vrindavan. So Mahaprabhu also was not successful in going to Vrindavan in one sense. Then the next time when he attempted, he was successful and he went only with one servant, Balabhadra Bhattacharya, towards Vrindavan through the Jarikand forest. And Mahaprabhu was in so much ecstasy while going to Vrindavan that it is said that his ecstasy started multiplying hundreds and thousands of times. And that is why in Jarikand forest, he was able to transform even the deers and the elephants and the tigers. And as he reached Vrindavan, his ecstasy multiplied thousands of times more. And the moment he reached Vrindavan Dham, the first place he visited was Aritgram or <clears throat> where <clears throat> Arishtasur was killed. The first thing Mahaprabhu did in Vrindavan is to reach Aritgram where Aristasur was killed and locate Radhakund and Shantpund. So here in the Chaitanya Charitamrit, uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrit Madhya Leela 18th chapter 3 to 14, these verses describe how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, <coughs> located Shantpund and Radhakund, rediscovered you can say. Now I'll just go through these verses because they are very interesting. Emate Mahaprabhu Nachite Nachite Aritagram Asi Bhaya Hola Achambite. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced in ecstasy. Nachite Nachite. But when he arrived, arrived at Aritagram, Aritagram Asi 
bhaya hoyla chambite his sense perception was awakened that means mahaprabhu was completely in internal consciousness he had lost complete external consciousness but when he reached arit gram this is the first place in vrindavan he reached he came back to external consciousness his sense perception was awakened now proper in the purport mentions arit gram is also called arisht gram so we know that uh, one of the last asuras killed by krishna was arishtasur and after arishtasur was killed uh, in the shrimad bhagavatam the past time is mentioned how uh, the holy radha kund and sham kund manifested the past time whole past time is mentioned so it was named as arishta gram and later it became as arit gram shri chaitanya mahaprabhu understood that in that village arishta sur had been killed by krishna while there he inquired about radha kund but no one could tell him where it was the brahman accompanying him also could not ascertain its whereabouts shri chaitanya mahaprabhu could then understand that the holy places known as radha kund and sham kund were at that time lost to everyone's vision he therefore discovered radha kund and sham kund which were two reservoirs of water in two paddy fields so just in two paddy fields there was two small reservoirs of water and that were actually radha kund and sham kund although there was very little water shri chaitanya mahaprabhu was omniscient and could understand that formerly these two ponds were called radha kund and sham kund in this way radha kund and sham kund were discovered so proper is narrating the whole past time let us go to the verse arite radha kund varta puche lokasthane keha nahi kahe sangera brahmana na jane shri chaitanya asked the local people puche lokasthane where is radha kund radha kund varta no one could inform him keha nahi kahe and the brahmana accompanying him did not know either sangera brahmana na jane tirtha lupta jani prabhu sarvagya bhagavan duhi danya kshetra alpa jale kailasan the lord then understood that the holy place called radha kund was no longer visible lupta tirtha lupta jani however being the omniscient supreme personality of god at sarvagya bhagavan he discovered radha kund and sham kund in two paddy fields dhanya dhanya means paddy kshetra alpa jale kailasan there was only little water but he took his bath there deki sab gram loker vismay hoy laman preme prabhu kare radha kunde rastavan when the people of the village saw shri chatramapu taking his bath in those two ponds in the middle of the paddy fields they were very much astonished the lord then offered his praise to radha kund now here mahaprabhu is teaching from his own example that whenever we go to holy places whichever holy place we visit either in the association of very advanced devotees we should hear katha of those holy places we should offer prayers uh, in glorification of those holy places like govardhan when we visit we can recite the govardhan ashtakam recited by rupa goswami vishwanath chakra thakur raghunath das goswami so similarly mahaprabhu uh, starts reciting prayers about radha kund radha kundera stavan he then offered prayers to radha kund what are the prayers abo gopi hoyte radha krishna ra prayasi tache radha kund priya priyar sarasi of all the gopis radha rani is the dear most radha krishna ra prayasi prayasi means very dear similarly the lake known as radha kund is very dear to the lord tache radha kund priya just as uh, shrimati radha rani is very dear to krishna radha kund is also similarly very dear to krishna so if you want to attain krishna's mercy we have to take shelter of radha kund which is as good as taking shelter of shrimati radha rani because it is very dear to shrimati radha rani priyar sarasi priyara sarasi now he glorifies this verse from the puranas yata radha priya vishnu tasya kundam priyam tata sarva gopeshu sevika 
Vishnurathyanta Vallabha. Just as Srimati Radharani is most dear to Lord Krishna, Yatha Radha Priya Vishnu, so her lake, known as Radha Kund, is also very dear to him. Tasya Kundam Priyam Tata. Of all the gopis, Sarva Gopi Keshu, Sarva Gopi Shu, Srimati Radharani is certainly the most beloved. Vishnur Atyanta Vallabha. Then Mahaprabhu says, Aikunda Nitta Krishna, Radhika Rasange, Jalaj Jale Jala Keli, Karetira Rasa Sange. In that lake, Aikunde, Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani used to sport daily in the water and have a rasa dance on the bank. So, Sri Krishna performs his rasa dance in three important places. Anyone knows? Can raise their hands. Some hint is given now already. There are three important places where Sri Krishna performs his rasa dance. Anyone has idea about all these three places? Can raise their hand. Okay, there is one hand which is raised by one devotee. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Uh, uh, one is in the forests of Vrindavan. One is yes. on banks of Yamuna. Yamuna? Yeah. Where exactly in Yamuna, on the banks of Yamuna? It is Vamsi water there where Yamuna is flowing. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't think I need that. I know the details, but uh, I heard on banks of Yamuna. Okay, then the third one. Third, third, I'm not very sure, but uh, is it on the hoods of Kaliya also? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, yeah, okay. then I speculated here. Yeah, Sanatan Lakshmi Mataji has typed it as Nidhi one in Vrindavan Prabhuji. This already is being stated in the verse. Vrindaranya Mudarapani Ramanad, you know, that Krishna, Vrindavan is superior because Krishna performs his. Rasalila past time there, Vamshi Vata. This we narrated. So there are three places where Krishna performs his uh, Rasalila past time, especially. Anyone has any other idea? Anyone would like to try? Okay. So the first place is in Vrindavan. <clears throat> in Vrindavan on the Vamshi Vat. That is what we celebrate on the Sharad Purnima. Now there it is mentioned that Sri Krishna does not fully relish the Raslila. Why? Because even the sadhana Siddha Gopis, that is those who by their sadhana in their previous life, like the Dandakaranya Rishis and the Shutichari, you know, the personified Vedas, uh, they also take birth in Vrindavan and they participate in Krishna's pastimes, attain perfection and go back to the spiritual world. Like especially the Zandakarana Rishis which is being mentioned. Even they participate in this Raslila in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan. And Sri Krishna does not fully relish this Raslila. It is just like having sweet rice with some traces of you know, salt in it. <laughs> so because the sadhana say the gopis are still you know not pure it's purity means not from our angle you know they are in spiritual bodies they are participating in krishna's pastimes but some slight traces 0.00001 something like that so krishna doesn't fully relish that ras leela there in vrindavan so the second place where krishna performs his ras leela is on the foothills of govardhan on Govardhan, in fact. And there, only the Nitya Siddha Gopis, the Nitya Siddha Gopis are the Gopis who come along with Krishna from the spiritual world. Only they participate in this Ras Leela. And the third place is at Radha Kund. At Radha Kund. So Krishna uh, fully and the highest relish of Raslila experiences at Radha Kund. 
So that is why Radha Kund is so glorious. Because Krishna performs his most intimate pastimes here. In that lake, Lord Krishna and Sri Mataraji used to sport daily in the water and have rasa dance on the bank. So on the bank of Radha Kund, especially uh, now this time here is around 12 o'clock here, 12-12.30 Madhyana. This time is the time where Krishna uh, has these pastimes on the bank of Radha Kund. The Jala Krida the sporting in the water and the rasa dance. And that is why uh, this place, Radha Kund, is most glorious. The highest Ras Lila Krishna uh, performs on the bank of Radha Kund. Sei kunde e ekabar kare snan tandra radha sama prema krishna kare dan. Indeed, Lord Krishna gives ecstatic love like that of Sri Mati Radharani, Tandra's Radha Sama Prem, to whoever bathes in that lake even once in this life. Ek bar kare snan, sei kunde e, ek bar kare snan, he will get Krishna Prem. Now, how many of us here devotees have uh, taken bath in Radha Kund? Had the opportunity when we went for a yatra. Uh, to Vrindavan can raise their hands. How many of us are there? Only one devotee. Oh, many have not gone to Vrindavan. <laughs> How many of you have visited Vrindavan can raise their hands? Okay. Only four of them. Okay, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six of you have visited Vrindavan. Anyway, we are all visiting now Vrindavan by studying Rupa Goswami's work. <laughs> so, <clears throat> my point is that, uh, okay, you can lower your hands. My point is that uh, it is mentioned just by taking once. Bath in Radha Kund, uh, we will get the same ecstatic love what Srimati Radharani has for Krishna. We will also attain uh, that same love for Krishna, it is mentioned. Now, this statement uh, has to be understood very carefully that uh, <clears throat> for sadhakas who are practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, where the consciousness is still not pure, <clears throat> we need to. Of course, with the permission of the spiritual master and our authorities, uh, we should uh, take their permission whenever we go for yatras. <clears throat> and then, uh, with their permission, in a devotional mood, uh, in the mood of service, if we get this permission, then we can take bath. And Srila Prabhupada is going to discuss quite a lot about it in the 11th verse. That time we will take more in detail. But my point is that we might take a dip and when we come out, we don't feel that we have attained Krishna Prem. <laughs> but definitely we are progressing towards it. Our consciousness is purified. We might not understand that. But for elevated devotees like the four Kumaras, they were already pure at heart. And when they went to the Vaikuntha and they were stopped by the doorkeeper Jayan Vijay, and Narayan came out and they just smelled the Tulsi. Tasya Ravindam Nayanasya Pada Ravindam Ginjal Kamishra Makaranda Vayu. So just by smelling the Tulsi, which was offered to the lotus feet of Narayan, it touched their chitta. Their chitta was already pure and immediately they attained love for Lord. They attained Prema. Or Sukadeva Goswami, he was in the past time a jnani, a monoist. <clears throat> he was a monoist. And he just heard two verses of Bhagavatam and his heart was transformed. He attained love for Krishna. So the point is that those who have come to higher stages of bhakti by practicing Raga Bhakti, because this is ninth verse. Eighth verse is speaking about Raganuga Bhakti. 
those who have attained the stage of maybe ruchi asakti and when they take bath you know they can get awakened to higher levels of consciousness of bhava bhakti of course uh, it is a independent will of krishna and shrimati radharani but those who are sadhakas when they take this opportunity and take bath and they will definitely get their consciousness purified this is the first point to be understood secondly for the kumaras the four kumaras just they once smelled the tulsi which was offered it went into their nostrils and they lost their attraction for impersonal brahman and they became purely attracted to krishna they attained prema so their chitta completely was already pure they were very elevated and little bit touch of bhakti and immediately they became pure devotees for sadhakas every day as a part of sadhana bhakti every day we should you know smell the flowers which is offered to uh, the lord every day when we do this slowly slowly our heart will purify and one day with many years of practice ultimately we will bear fruit in the form of you know pure bhava definitely it will you know fructify like that so that is the point i wanted to mention now there is one question asked that uh, whether uh, uh, you know there is a question by surekund prabhu that are we qualified to take bath in radhakund now this uh, i will take up again in the uh, 11th verse when i discuss about propa this spoken practical things about it there that time i will take up so please hold on till then so i'll just continue with the discussion here we'll complete this now chaitanya mahaprabhu says kundera maduri yena radhara maduri ma kundera mahima yena radhara mahima the attraction of radha kund is as sweet as that of shrimati radharani similarly the glories of the kund is as great as shrimati radharani so the maduri sweetness of radha kund and shrimati radharani is the same the glories of radha kund and the glories of shrimati radharani are the same and then uh, kaviraj goswami quotes this verse this verse is from the govinda leelamrit shiradeva hare tadiya sarasi preshtadbhutai swarguna yasyam shita madavendur anisham pritya taya kridite premasminbata radikeva labate yasyam sakrit snan krita tasyavai mahima tata madurima Because of its wonderful transcendental qualities, Adbhuta Swar Gune, Radha Kund is as dear to Krishna as Shrimati Radha Rani. Shri Radha Eva Hares Tadiya Sarasi Preshta. Tadiya means uh, <coughs> the Radha Kund. It is referring to Radha Preshta. It is as dear as Shrimati Radha Rani. it was in that lake yasyam that the all opulent lord shri krishna shri nuta madhava performed his pastimes with shrimad radharani with great pleasure and transcendental bliss indur anisham pritya taya kriditi kriditi means he performed his wonderful pastimes whoever bathes just once in radha kund yasyam sakrit snana krita just once attains shrimati radharani's loving attraction for shri krishna premasmin bata radhika eva labate who within this world can describe ke nastu varnaya shito shito means this world ke nastu who is that person varnaya who can describe the glories and sweetness of radha kund tasya vai mahima tata madurima so this is the praman he gives so yasyam sakrit snan krito Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, "Once, if you take bath, just like it is mentioned, ek Krishna naam sarva papa shoya hoy. Just one name of Krishna when we take, all the sins are destroyed. Now, many devotees will, you know, 
uh, honestly confess that we have been chanting Hare Krishna for many years, but we don't feel that still the propensity uh, for sin is completely destroyed. Our pap and pun is destroyed. Yes, everyone will admit, I feel. But Ek Krishna Naam, that name should be Shuddha Naam. And that can be taken only at the stage of Asakti. So that verse has to be referred like that. Similarly, just bathing, bathing once here refers to one who is on the verge of attaining Bhava Bhakti. He will definitely attain Bhava Bhakti and then Prima Bhakti. But for sadhakas, they should do it as many times as they get an opportunity, which Prabhupada is going to speak in the 11th verse. Emata Suti Kare Prema Vishtahan Tire Nritta Kare Kundalila Tanaya Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thus offered praise to Radha Kund. Suti Kare, overwhelmed by ecstatic love, Prema Vishtahan, he danced on the bank. Tira Nitya Kare, remembering the pastimes of Lord Krishna performed on the bank of Radha Kund. Kundera Mritika Lan Tilaka Karila Bhattacharya Dwara Mritika Sangha Karila Laila. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then marked his body with Tilaka. Kundera Lan Tilaka Karila. So he took the mud of the bank of Radhakund and made the Tilaka. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is setting the example that he can also use the uh, mud of Radhakund to apply Tilaka. And with the help of Balabhadva Treshara, he collected some of the mud and took it with him. Bhattacharya Dwaram Ritika Sangakari Laila. He carried it with him. So these verses from 3 to 14 explain how Mahaprabhu discovered Radha Kund. Now, in the part, it is mentioned, Srila Rupa Goswami has given much stress to Radha Kund because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire to find it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, in fact, uh, only visited once Vrindavan for two months. But the Goswamis were sent by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Vrindavan. They stayed in Vrindavan. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered the Goswamis, write literatures, uh, establish the Vaishnava Sadachar, and relocate the holy places of Radha Krishna's pastimes. But Mahaprabhu himself took the task of locating Radha Kund and Shankund. And this desire of Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Manubhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale. So Mahaprabhu's desire, innermost desire, is to give that same love. Unnata Ujjwala Ras, the topmost Madhurya Ras, which the Vaj, Vaj Gopis have for him. That same Ras, he wants to give it to the most fallen souls. And Rupa Goswami is that first thing about Radha Kund here as well. Who then would give up Radha Kund and try to decide elsewhere? After hearing all these glories, we might say, let's pack our bags and go and send Radha Kund. Prabhupada is saying, no person with transcendental intelligence. Now here, do we have this qualification? Do we have the transcendental intelligence? So Viveki, now Prabhupada is just translating here as who is intelligent, but here he is mentioning as transcendental intelligence. That means one should be very pure at heart. One should have control of the mind and senses. He is at the stage of Nishta and further he has advanced. So his subtle body is completely pure. The mind and intelligence are completely pure. Would not do so. The importance of Radha Kund, however, cannot be realized by other Vaishnava Sampradayas, nor can persons uninterested in devotional service of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understand the spiritual importance of the divine nature of Radha Kund. Thus, Radha Kund is mainly worshipped by the Gaudi Vaishnavas, the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, the glories of Radha Kund cannot be understood by other Sampradayas, other Vaishnava Sampradayas. In fact, uh, among the four sampradayas, two sampradaya teachings, two teachings from Kumara Sampradaya. The Kumara Sampradaya, two teachings Mahaprabhu picked up. If you remember in the starting, we had discussed this. In the very beginning, uh, I, 
I think so. Yes, it is. No, it's not here. I mentioned these four things. Someone is not there. So in the in the Kumar Sampradaya, he had picked up Ekanta Shri Aradhika Ashray, exclusive shelter of Srimati Radharani. Ah, yes, it is here. So the Kumara Sampradaya he had picked up Ekanta Radhika Ashray and Gopi Bhav. But yet, even the Kumara Sampradaya uh, devotees cannot understand the glories of Radha Kund. It is only the Gaudiya Sampradaya uh, revealed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and revealed by the Goswamis. So that's how glorious is our path. Uh, recently, I have been reading about uh, what Bhakti Siddhant Sarada Thakur has to say about Raga Nuga Bhakti and Radha Kund. So he mentions that in the Madhu Sampradaya is glorious because we are connected to the Madhu Sampradaya. And if somebody even takes sannyas in the Madhu Sampradaya, in fact, their you know, uh, path of progression is after one takes sannyas, he directly doesn't attain liberation and Vaikuntha. He has to go through higher and higher stages in the higher realms, ultimately go to Brahma Loka. And from Brahma Loka, he can go back to the spiritual world that is a Vaikuntha Loka, maximum Vaikuntha Loka. And it takes 100 lives. That's what Bhakti Siddhanta Sarita says. But if one takes shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, he can attain Krishna Prem in one life and go back to the spiritual world. So nobody can understand actually the glories of Radha Kund or the glories of <clears throat> what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give us. So that is the point here Srila Prabhupada is making. So this is in brief uh, text uh, 9. Anyone has any questions or clarifications about text 9? Then we can move to text 10. Text 10, today we will take a half part and in the next one class we will finish text 10 and text 11 together, hopefully. Any questions or clarifications about Radha Kund, about these two paragraphs? This is all above our... <laughs> but at least we should have a clear understanding about what is the you know, goal which is given to us, how glorious is it and how worshipable it is. And we all this is Prabhupada is speaking in Upadesh Amrit, which is one of the first basic books. <laughs> I'm not going into details. There are still not many details, but we are just uh, briefly discussing what is there in the purport. Uh, yes, Mataji, uh, you have a question? Yes, Mataji. You have discussed about three places where Krishna performs his Raslila pastimes. One is Vrindavan, second one is Govardhan, and third one is Radha Kunda. So yes. in Govardhan, Nitya, Nitya Siddha Gopis were taken. Uh, they took the participation in that Tras Leela. And Radha yes. Kunda, um, that um, pure devotees. And what about Vrindavan Prabhu? No. Uh, in Govardhan, only the Nitya Siddhas uh, participate in these Ras Leela. And even in Radha Kund. But in Radha Kund, Krishna relishes the highest because Krishna's love for Radharani overflows at Radhakul. In Vrindavan, uh, along with the Nit Siddhas, even the Sadhana Siddhas also participate in that Ras Leela. But Krishna doesn't fully relish it. Just like sweet rice with one particle of sand or one particle of salt. You know, because they are still not pure. And I explained what that purity means because they are in spiritual bodies. The sadhana siddhas who are participating in Krishna's pastimes, it might be 0.0000001%, something like that. So Krishna doesn't fully relish it. So he relishes it more in Govardhan when he participates, only the Niti Siddhas are participating, and still more in Radha Kund. Highest place is Radha Kund. I hope it is clear, Mataji. Yes, Okay. There is another question by Shri Valli Mataji. Yes, Mataji. 
Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, can you again uh, once more explain why other sampradayas are not able to understand the importance of uh, Radha Kund? Because uh, as you said, Kumara Sampradaya has that Gopi Bhava. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get that clarified, Prabhu. Uh, the other sampradayas uh, cannot understand uh, um, the glory of Radha Kund because the other sampradayas don't accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Only the Gaudiya... Uh, no, Prabhu, the uh, go, Kumara Sampradaya especially, they have the Gopi Bhava. Yes, they uh, have the Gopi well, Bhava, but, but they, they don't accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is only in the Gaudiya Sampradaya that they accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is accessible. That is why those who don't accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they also think that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a great devotee. They don't accept uh, the Tattva, the Chaitanya Tattva. So that is why they also worship Vrindavan Krishna. And uh, there is more, you know, Vatsale Bhav. There is also Madhurya because we see there is Ekanta Radhika Ashray and Gopi Bhav. But still, these, uh, this uh, Unnata Ujwala Ras, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give Prem Ras, Kariya Niryas, Karite Aswadana, Raga Marga Bhakti, Korite Pracharana, Rasika Shekara Krishna, Paramakaruna, so this only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can give us directly. So without taking shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, they cannot uh, get access to this. So the other sampradayas, in fact, Madhva Sampradaya or even other sampradayas, they don't accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They uh, just think that he was a great saint in the medieval ages. So they don't uh, accept the tattva of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Only the Gaudiyas accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, as Sri Krishna come in the mood of Srimati Radharani. And these confidential truths are only accessible to us in the Maranda Gaudiya Sampradaya. And that is why they cannot understand these glories. So they do not consider uh, uh, Radha Kund also as a pilgrimage place, Prabhu? Yes, it is not revealed to them. They cannot fathom it, they cannot, it is not revealed to us. Only the Goswamis who have revealed to us these things. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has revealed to us. So for them, the holy place might be some other place. In fact, uh, uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, for them, holy place is Govardhan. And for us, it is Radha Kund. <laughs> so it is like that. There is also, within that, uh, within Vrindavan, there is hierarchy. But Rupa Goswami has clarified in this verse that which is the highest place. So there is no uh, place in this universe which is as holy as Sri Radha Kund in this universe. <laughs> so Rupa Goswami is revealed to us. So that's, this you know, is not accessible to them. It is not available in their literatures. Okay? Yes, Prabhupada. Yes, Prabhupada. Uh, Mohan Lal Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes. Uh, Prabhu, just now you discussed that uh, any uh, means uh, uh, any uh, like uh, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, Lord Krishna or Lord Murama, they are all same form. So any bhakti or anything we follow, they all are same or is any difference? Okay. See, um, firstly, you have to understand uh, that although all are uh, the absolute truth, but there is gradation in terms of rasa. Krishna is avatari. And that is why he is called as Akhila Rasa Amrita Murti. And Krishna manifests uh, the highest qualities. Rupa Goswami in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu mentions that there are 64 qualities in Krishna. And four qualities are very unique in Krishna. That is his Leela Madhuri. He performs very sweet pastimes with his intimate pastimes with his devotees. Then there is Venu Madhuri. Venu means, you know, he plays the flute. Then there is Rupa Madhuri. Krishna is very, very beautiful. And then there is uh, uh, Leela Madhuri, Prem Madhuri, 
Rupa Madhuri, I don't know one more. I don't recollect. So these qualities are there only in Krishna. Narayan is also same. He is an expansion of Krishna, but he exhibits only 60 qualities. And there is only uh, Shantaras and Dasaras. There is no Sakyaras. You cannot have friendship with Narayan, keep your hand on Narayan and go for a walk with Narayan <laughs> in Vaikuntha. Everyone with awe and reverence will offer stuti to Narayan. It's more worship in awe and reverence. But in Vrindavan, Krishna's friends climb on Krishna. They have very, you know, very intimate relationship with Krishna. So this is the rasa uh, which uh, Krishna himself relishes and this is the sweetness of Krishna. So there is difference in bhakti which is performed to the Lord of Vaikuntha, to Lord Rama or Narsimha and Krishna. And Krishna, there is intimacy and there is higher rasa. So this all, you know, uh, is uh, discussed in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So when we discuss Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it will become more clear. Okay. Uh, Surikund Prabhuji has a question. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes. Prabhuji, as uh, when we take bath in Radha Kun, we develop uh, Krishna Prem. If you sprinkle water on a forehead, do we get? <laughs> See, I discussed quite in detail that uh, yes, it is good that the water of Radha Kun is coming on our forehead. Uh, it will have a purifying effect. It doesn't mean that we'll get immediately Krishna Prem. Immediately, the Ashta Sattvic Vikas will come of Bhava Bhakti. We will get purified. So in sadhana bhakti, our heart is still not purified. So Prabhupada in the 11th verse will discuss more in detail that uh, uh, as many times we get a chance to take bath in Radha Khan, we should do that. But he gives a lot of warnings also. That time we will take up that discussion there. Okay. Okay. There is... Uh, Parthi, Partha Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanad Pranam. Yeah. Uh, Prabhuji, in uh, 2012 or 2013, I got a chance to make a parikrama in uh, Mayapur, Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. There in some places they told, they told me it is a Radha Kund and Shama Kund uh, Saravar is there. Some lake is there. It is true mm -hmm. whether it is uh, okay. It is a replica of that they are telling on those days. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, the dhams uh, are at different, different levels. Now, the dhams also are manifested by pure devotees. In fact, when Rupa and Sanatan Goswami were staying in Ramkeli, uh, by their purity, by their bhajan, uh, they had created Gupta Vrindavan. They had created Gupta Vrindavan. And there was Radha Kund and Sham Kund also. So the pure devotees with their pure desire can manifest you know, uh, these holy places by their bhajan. And these places, uh, the more the devotees practice spiritual life, the purity and the potency is maintained there. The purity and potency is maintained. So, Rupa and Sanatana had created in Ramkeli, in Amara or Acharas. Narottam Das Thakur, his birthplace is Keturi. I personally visited Keturi. I had an opportunity in 2010 to visit Keturi. And uh, behind his house was Radha Kund and Sham Kund. So, Narottam Das Thakur is a pure devotee and he had manifested Radha Kund and Sham Kund. The third, if you know, is... Bhakti Siddhan Sarasi Thakur in Mayapur. In his Chaitanya Mat, there is a Radha Kund and Sham Kund which he has manifested. Now, in today, we lost you, Prabhuji. I think. What is back? Uh, you are able to hear, I guess. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Because I think 
Yeah. So, in today's times, uh, how many devotees have heard of the Vrindavan manifested, created by pure devotees? How many of you have heard about places? Prabhupada himself in the West, he formed what is the new Vrindavan. Yes, the new Vrindavan created there. And even the new Navdeep he created, the Navdeep Dham, I don't know where in Europe it is there. Shivaram Swami Maharaj in, uh, in uh, his place of preaching, uh, which country is that? Uh, I'm not able to recollect. He has also manifested Vrindavan there. Then we have the Govardhan Eco Village in Vada, in Bombay. So by the pure devotee's desire, yeah, Hungary, yes. By the pure devotee's desire, uh, they can manifest these holy places. And these holy places uh, are meant for devotees to reside there so that ultimately they can develop remembrance of the original Vrindavan, which is there in Mathura. It helps us to uh, uh, go into meditation into the original Vrindavan. And these places uh, are spiritually potent as long as the devotees perform their bhajan there. It, the purity is maintained by their bhajan there. So like that, there are different, different dhams. One dham is in the spiritual world. That is a, you know, Golok dham. The second dham is there where Krishna manifested, where he performs his pastimes. This is the second dham. The third is the dham in the heart. <clears throat> Prabhupada was carrying Vrindavan in his heart. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 12.8 says, Mai eva mana adhyastha, mai buddhim niveshaya, nivashasi maam eva, ata urdham na samshaya. So the heart is also the dham. And such pure-hearted souls, they by their desire can manifest also replicas of dhams, which help us to ultimately meditate on uh, uh, the original Dham Vrindavan. I hope it is clear. Okay. So, last question now for this verse Madan Mohan Prabhuji. Guru Hare Krishna Dhanavad Pranam. Uh, uh, we have enough discussions on Radha Kun, but uh, the last question I have is the form of liquid mercy and the form of solid mercy. So Radha Kund is also known to be liquid mercy. Can you please explain to me? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, the Vaishnava Acharya has explained that uh, uh, Sri Radha Kund and Sham Kund actually are the molten forms of Srimati Radharani and Krishna in the form of Dravya. They are non-different from Radha and Krishna in that sense. So that is why uh, uh, Radha Kund and Sham Kund are you know, so glorious. The molten form of Prema <laughs> of Srimati Radha Rani is Radha Kund and the molten form or the you know, melted form of Dravya form of Sri Krishna is Sham Kund. So that is what even the Vaishnava Acharyas explained. Okay. Uh, Mohan Arukshan Prabhuji has a question. Yes, Prabhuji? I don't know whether I can ask. Prabhuji, just like um, this is the uh, view of uh, Rupa Goswami yeah. about the Radha Kun, yeah, the importance of Radha Kun. So, yeah. uh, like this, any other Goswami is having a different view, or all, all they have accepted uh, Rupa Goswami's uh, view of uh, Radha Kun is the topmost, uh, uh, topmost place compared to the other, other place things. Compared to Govardhan or compared to Madhura. Yeah. Like yeah, very good, very good question, very interesting question. In fact, uh, uh, among all the Goswamis, Rup Goswami is our leader, which we had discussed, if you remember. And Rup Goswami, uh, I don't know, something is wrong with the setting here. Yeah. Yeah, Rup Goswami is our leader. And Rupa Goswami in his 
Shastras, Abhide Shastras is very clear that the Prayojan is ultimately we have to attain Radha Kund. And ultimately we will be attaining Srimati Radharani's mercy and the same mood of worship and we will be attaining the spiritual world. So he is directing the Prayojan uh, to ultimately take shelter of Radha Kund and take shelter of Srimati Radharani. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is our Prayojan Acharya. And Raghunath Das Goswami, where did he reside? Most of his life, he resided at Radha Kund. <laughs> he was qualified to reside in Radha Kund. <laughs> and he has also composed works <clears throat> when it comes to Prayojan, explaining the glories of Radha Kund. So for Gaudiya's, the ultimate goal is to you know attain the mercy of Srimati Radharani by Shri attaining Radha Kund. Of course, there is a lot to speak about Radha Kund when Srila Bhakti Siddhan Sarit Thakur is to take Vrindavan Parikrama. And many Babaji's were there in Radha Kund. <laughs> and once Bhakti Siddhan Sarit Thakur made a statement after he did the Parikrama to his sannyasis, and he started laughing and he said, you know, I did not see any Vrajvasi in you know Vrindavan. They were all stopped. There were so much renounced Babaji's, you know, staying there and performing their bhajan. He said, all they are neophytes, Kanishta Dikaris. They are not qualified to stay in Radha Kurni. <laughs> then how come they are staying there in such a holy place? Then Bhakti Siddhan Thakur said, just like Aga, Bhakta and Putana were also able to enter Vrindavan, these cheaters also sometimes can enter Vrindavan. So, uh, residing on the bank of Radha Kund, Adhikar, you know, we don't have. And even if we have, our mood is what our Acharyas have given to preach the message. That will come again in text 11. Okay? So, okay, now, so we will just briefly touch just the verse on text 10. And uh, in the next week, we will finish text 10 and text 11. Okay? Okay. Let us go to text. Uh, okay, now this we have discussed these points. Uh, these points we have discussed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found the exact location. Rupa Goswami is trust on Radha Kund. Radha Kund is worshipped by Gaudiya Vaishnavas. I just wanted to show the picture of Radha Kund. At least uh, we can have the darshan of Radha Kund. Uh, this is the left side where Radha Kund is there. On the right side is uh, Sham Kund and internally there is, a, you know, uh, both these waters join here in between. Although this uh, uh, this uh, separation is there, but internally these waters join each other, Radha Kund and Sham Kund. So here actually is the Bhajan uh, Stali and Samadhi of uh, Raghunath Das Goswami at this place. Uh, this is a place from here you can, you know, you can see there are the bathing guards uh, on this bank of Radha Kund. It's a huge lake which was uh, later on developed by Raghunath Das Goswami. This is Radha Kund. So just by having darshan of Radha Kund, we can get the mercy of Radha Kund. Okay. So we are finishing now today text 9. And briefly we will just take up uh, one, uh, the verse of text 10 and end today's discussion. So let us go to text uh, 10. This also I just, uh, okay. Verse text 10 is very interesting discussion. Now again, this is in a long meter. I think it is again in Vasatilika. I'll just recite. Karmibhya parito hare priyataya vektim yayur jnanina tebhyo jnana vimukta bhakti parama preme kanishta stata in the Shastras, it is said that all types of that of all types of fruity workers, Karmibya Parito Hare, he who is advanced in knowledge of higher values of life. Vet Tim Yayur Gyaninas is favored by the Supreme Lord Hari Priyataya. Now, 
those who are karmis now here what is karmis i will uh, come more in detail when we go to the purport karmis are those who are following the path of karma yoga <clears throat> which is specially uh, spoken in the karma kanda scriptures in fact they are very dear to krishna parito hare because they are following the path of vedas and more dear priyataya more favored are the gyanis so superior to the karmis are the gyanis this is the point out of the many such people who are advanced in knowledge gyanis one who is practically liberated by virtue of his knowledge tapyo gyan vimukta may take to devotional service bhakti parama so there are gyanis they are dear to krishna among those who are gyanis who have attained perfection that means they are liberated by the process of gyan yoga they are more dear to krishna and if they come in touch or they take up to devotional service they are still doing more dear to krishna atma ramascha muniyo nirganta apya purkrame the atma rams those who are liberated also they also take up to devotional service ittam bhuta guna hari such are the wonderful qualities of hari that he even attracts the atma rams who are absorbed in uh, bliss of brahman so we saw that how sukhdev goswami got attracted to lord the four kumaras got attracted to lord so those who are gyan vimukta those who are liberated souls they take they may take to devotional service and such people are more dear he is superior to others they are more dear however one who has actually attained prema pure love for krishna is superior to him so these people who have taken up to bhakti they are very dear to krishna but by the practice of bhakti they have attained perfection they have attained prema bhakti they are still more dear to krishna the gopis are exalted above all the advanced devotees because they are always totally dependent upon shri krishna the transcendental cowherd boy tebhyasta pashu pal pankaj drishas so those who are premi bhaktas among them the gopis are the top most premi bhaktas they are completely dependent on the cowherd boy so they are more dear to krishna now among the gopis it comes among the gopis shrimati radharani is most dear to krishna tapyo p sa radhika now again rupa goswami comes to the point her kund leg is as profoundly dear to lord krishna as this most beloved of gopis preshta tad vad iyam tadiya sarasi tadaya sarasi means the kund preshta tad vad tad vad means as as you know shrimati radharani is very dear to krishna similarly he is her pawn who then will not reside at radhakund and in a spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional feelings a prakrit bhav now here is a very very important point prabhupad is giving in the translation and here is giving in square bracket now prakrit means material a prakrit means spiritual who in his spiritual body yesterday we were discussing of the development of the spiritual body with the practice of raganuga bhakti through internal meditation the siddha deha if you remember now initially there is self realization at the stage of nishta and slowly slowly uh, by the mercy of the guru who reveals uh, his mood and gives him uh, more <clears throat> instructions on bhajan he goes through the stage of asakti ruchi asakti and attains the stage of bhava at the stage of bhava his spiritual body his siddha deha is revealed and he uh, knows his rasa with krishna and he is reciprocating and relishing that rasa whether it is shant das uh, sorry whether it is das sa, sakya vatsalya or madhurya so he is in a spiritual body <clears throat> ecstatic spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional a prakrit bhav in fact at the stage of bhava it is mentioned that a devotee's body completely is spiritual it is not material and we saw in text 6 also drishte swabhava janita vapuscha 
न प्राकृतम इह भक्त जनस्य पश्यते वी शुड नॉट कंसिडर उत्तम अधिकारी इज बॉडी टू बी मटीरियल इट इज अप्राकृत अप्राकृत वैष्णव प्राकृत दृष्टि निषेध दैट वॉज अ पॉइंट थीम दर भक्ति ठाकुर से so here is a point that one who has attained this stage only can reside at radha kund not those who are neophytes so who then will not reside at radha kund in a spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional feelings renders loving service to the divine couple shri shri radha govind who perform their ashtakaliya leela their eternal eightfold daily pastimes indeed those who execute devotional service on the banks of radha kund are the most fortunate people in the universe tam na ashrayat ka kriti kriti means fortunate so the most fortunate people are ones who would execute their bhajan on the bank of radha kund so again if you see uh, here is the hierarchy not of the holy places but the hierarchy of the devotees so text 10 of updeshamrat mentions bhajan kari madhe sarvashreshth those who are doing bhajan who is the top most who is the best devotee karmi superior to karmi is gyani superior to the gyani is gyan vimukta superior to them is one who is gyan vimukta who has taken up to devotion and one who has attained prema bhakti he is superior the gopis who have pure highest prema for the lord they are superior and the topmost is shrimati radharani the topmost gopi who is very very they are the best devotee is shrimati radharani so that's the theme in text 10 so shrimati radharani is the dearest to krishna and similarly is her lake radha kund so that is the theme of discussion on text 8 so we will discuss the purport uh, <coughs> in the next class So in the next week we will be finishing Upadesha Amrit. Any questions you have regarding up till now what we discussed? Uh, especially eight, nine, and ten are all our aspirations, which are way way above <laughs> our you know. So. so that's why we if you remember how much more in detail we went through first few text we spent many classes but these are all our you know aspirations way above in our sky it is <laughs> but this is what uh, we have been given and we should try to understand it and the more we understand it uh, the more we understand what a lofty goal it is and how glorious it is how worshipable it is and what a kind of mercy mahaprabhu has come to give when we fathom we can develop genuine humility and practice our bhajan sadhana bhakti intensely <laughs> but definitely this is what mahaprabhu has come mahaprabhu has many you know deities and some deities are like this one hand is up and another hand is down yes so what does that mean you know to the most fallen down ridden he is giving the most highest the highest which we can never imagine also so that's all our prayojan so we just have to hear it that's it <laughs> okay so thank you very much shila prabhupad ki jai shri rup goswami pad ki jai shri upadesha amrit ki jai hare krishna hare krishna